American media and, and British media as well, um, through these other entities, got purchased uh, and, and corrupted. Um, millions of dollars, and this is in the Columbia Journalism Review, went from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to legacy sites like The Guardian and the BBC for COVID education. And that means smearing people like, like me um, or other very distinguished dissidents like Dr. McCullough, Dr. Malone, Dr. Alexander. Um, and also the CARES Act uh, is a billion dollars of our tax money, um, much of which goes to basically paying influencers and, and paying off community groups. I mean, all the way down to the level of little dance troops or little churches and synagogues and, uh, and certainly little news outlets. Um, so the news business is in a precarious state and here's millions of dollars flowing if you just, you know, follow the COVID line, follow the talking points. Um, they thoroughly corrupted our media. It's sad for our legacy media and it's sad for the consumers of media that are consuming legacy media because they're being lied to consistently. But it's kind of beautiful that a lot of alternative news mm -hmm. outlets um, are, are booming because people know they're being lied to and those legacy media are corrupted. Naomi Wolf is a celebrated liberal author and journalist who's never been afraid to say something controversial. She's a Rhodes Scholar, a graduate of both Yale and Oxford. Wolf has worked for President Bill Clinton and presidential hopeful Al Gore. She spent her career as a darling of the liberal corporate media until very recently, about two years ago, when she began to question the narrative surrounding COVID-19. Since then, her mainstream media coverage has been smear piece after smear piece. Wolf's new book, The Bodies of Others, is filled with clear-eyed, sober insights of the workings of the new public health regime, where it came from, and where it's going. I traveled to the mountains of upstate New York to talk to her about the lockdowns, the vaccines, big tech, and censorship. Here's the conversation. Your house is far from civilization almost. <laughs> we, have, we have a bear uh, coming around here. First, I'm going to ask you what prompted you to move away from the city and um, away from everyone. You're, we're in the, in the forest right now. Yes, we are. And uh, Jeremy's right. I just saw that my nemesis, this teenage black bear who kept me locked upstairs for an hour a couple of weeks ago with a BB gun because I grabbed the wrong weapon, kind of circled <laughs> the house continually. So I had a traumatic experience with the bear and the bear has just appeared crossing the road again. So <laughs> it's all very exciting here in the woods. Um, why are we here? We're here, well, I bought this place in 2001 after the 9-11 attack because I just, I've, I've lived in a lot of conflict areas and war zones as a journalist and also just my family spent time in, um, in Israel during two of the wars mm -hmm. when I was growing up. And so I was very aware after 9-11 with two small children that it's hard to get out of Manhattan if mm -hmm. there's a crisis. Bridges, tunnels, it's yeah. so easy to isolate. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have finished every one of my books up here because it's a very inspiring mm -hmm. place. Um, but I guess we moved up here full time in March of 2020 because my husband Brian O'Shea also has been in many conflict areas as a soldier um, embedded with special forces and as a former member of military intelligence, uh, the military intelligence community. and. So both of us recognized in March of 2020 right away, actually when um, Governor Cuomo said he was closing Broadway, we both recognized that something very bad was about to happen because no one anywhere closes down mm -hmm. um, commerce and education and basically human assembly mm -hmm. um, if, if it's not a totalitarian regime. So. We didn't know if what was going to come was going to be politically really bad or, or a, a really bad act of God mm -hmm. or nature. But we both instinctively on March 8th were like, we're getting out of the city right away. And came up here. And came up here full time. Due to YouTube censorship policies, we can't put the rest of the interview here. If you want to hear the rest of my interview with Naomi Wolf, where we talk about vaccines, the effects of lockdowns, the future of news media, and how she has documented proof that the federal government worked with Twitter to get rid of her account, go to rebelnews.com or follow the link in the description.